Hey folks, in this episode of Stag, I'm going to be fiddling around with the door. Z now I'm going to run around, so right at the beginning of this video I shall run around what the issues are I'm looking to fix on the door and then maybe you can decide if you want to watch this video or you don't care about the Stag, you just want to watch this idiot shouting at it and doing it wrong. Um, happy with that. Um, if you want to give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up, please. And subscribe, please down there somewhere subscribe not many of the people that view the videos on this channel are actually subscribed so either you're not logged in when you're watching them which is most likely because you're subscribed so you get the updates on your phone then you watch it on the telly and of course then it wouldn't register as being a subscribed watcher so i suspect that's what the what the root cause is thinking around the box thinking around the box what are you talking about thinking out of the box If for some bizarre reason you feel like buying me a beer because I've helped you or whatever, um, then um, there is a link below in the description. You'll have to go onto your computer to watch it, but there's a there's a PayPal um, buy me a beer kind of link there. But don't feel obliged to buy me a beer. It's not mandatory at all in any way whatsoever. Um, and if you want to contact me because you've got questions about a Stag, Range Rover, Classic Car, where I get my hair cut, anything like that, then just drop me an email at... Church House Classics, it's all one word, at gmail.com. And I'll do my best to answer you as quickly as I possibly can. I've also got a website. If you go back to the homepage of this channel, you'll see it in the bottom corner. It's down there somewhere in the bottom corner, the website linked. Because while I operate a business, this is obviously working on my own car. So this is my stuff. God, that car looks like a ghost today, doesn't it? Oh, there we are. That's a bit better. Sorry, flashing bloody light now. It doesn't flash when I'm there. That's weird, isn't it? Anyway, we're chuntering. Let's get on with doing this door. Right, so issues with the door. First and foremost, um, okay, the, the, the gasket's broken on the door handle down here, but I'm not particularly bothered about that. Um, the car is difficult to lock when using the key on the outside of the door. Sometimes it locks, sometimes it doesn't. More often than not, I have to use the handle on the inside of the door, hold the handle on the outside of the door, and then lock it. <laughs> and even that didn't work today. Um, right, <laughs> so we've got issues. And you can see that the handle is in the lock position down here. Um, so the car doesn't always lock. That's my first problem. I'm going to fix that. Um, secondly, it rattles. Listen. Oh, would you believe it? It's locked that time. So now it's locked. I can actually use the key to unlock it. And it unlocks. But I can't then lock it on the door. You can hear the rattles. It doesn't sound like kadunk. It's the other issue uh, I've just noticed on this is that the door um, is not the, the, the trim panel is not connected properly. Uh, this is quite common with these things. There's plastic trim clips all over the place, um, and I'll go through as best I can and get this thing sorted. Uh, I know the light's not working on here because the battery's disconnected at the moment because I'm about to go into the door. Now, I know there's no speakers or anything in there, but it has got this light switch in there. Um, and I didn't want to drain the battery either because I'd have the courtesy light on inside the car. And, you know, it's just not worth the aggravation. Now, one thing I did notice, um, the car was parked out in the paddock um, in the tremendous June summer rain that we've had. Um, and because the car was slightly pointing uphill, uh, there's no drain hole at the back end of the door down here. Um, right, so I need to check the drain holes and find out what's happening because the water was filled up to the level inside the door here, which is why this panel's warped. So that kind of inspired me, I think, just to do a bit of bloody work on this car. Okay, the little quarter light. Let's see, I really want to polish this thing, but it's not the sort of thing I do. The little quarter light control works beautifully. So while it's all apart, I'll give that a little lube. Um, the thing comes apart really, really very, very easily. Um, <laughs> there's hardly anything to worry about. This handle stays as, on, as part of the door trim itself. Um, there should be screws that go in underneath, and we'll have a go at fixing that as well because they should hold the whole thing tight to the door. Um, and I've got rib nuts now to fix this because I don't think I've had this door apart in well since it was uh, since it had its body restoration, so that's 14 years. Um, it really is quite lazy of me, I know, but as anyone who works on other people's cars will know, your car comes a fair way down the list, and if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. 
And it's only because when I was driving this thing down to Devon the other day, and I was thinking, God, this thing rattles when you drive it along. That's going to come off there. This little chrome thing is stuck on here for some reason. Is it because of that? No. Why is it stuck? It's just got caught on the on the pin. Right. It should come off the bastard. There we are. It's off. Right, on the back of this thing, you've got these little step bits here. That one's obviously broken, but it's got one on there, and that hooks over the top of a pin on the handle itself. It just holds it in place. Uh, next thing now, normally there would be clips holding this thing on. Uh, but in this case, I can tell you there are screws. So when it comes to getting clips off, just get one of these things, trim remover. I've got lots of tape around this one so I don't end up damaging the paintwork around the door. If the clip breaks, then it breaks. It's not the end of the world. There's a clip there. The screw there. I've got fed up with clips breaking and have just resorted to drilling that hole, which is pretty amateur nasty stuff. I don't normally operate this way. I normally do it, fix it properly, get it working properly. That's pretty uh, poor of me, isn't it? Right, one clip up here. Come on, clip. Oh, there might be another screw under here. Yeah, there's a screw under here. Now, we should be able to pivot this thing forwards, off and out, and then we'll find underneath here just two little bullet connectors for the light, for the courtesy light. There we go. One trim panel that can go on the roof. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this lock mechanism out, uh, because it's partly that, I think, that rattles. What I probably need to do uh, before I go absolutely berserk on this, uh, I don't want to find myself with being locked out of the car. Um, I'll work on that in a second. So getting this thing out, of course it's all uh, Imperial. 5 sixteenths. Yes, 5 sixteenths. Proper measurement. Not 8 mil or 7 mil, no, 5 sixteenths. comes out. So up here we've got the window regulator, these four bolts, window regulator. These two little fellas here are for the quarter light regulator uh, and the rest of it really is around the door frame, door structure. So before... Now, where are we? Up here, on the end of the door, up against the lock, we've got these little catch things here. And normally, you just kind of flick up the little retainer, which is part of the lock itself, and then pull the rod out. Okay, and the same with the other one, which you can just see above it. Come on, you bastard. There it goes. And then I can withdraw the lock and rods from the car. Sorry, the, the, the lock. The interior catches from the car. Now, this is weird. I wonder why I've done this. That is weird. It looks like what I've done is put plastic tube over them. Aquarium plastic tube. Now, why have I done that? I can't see the point of that, really. Okie doke. Right, now we've done that. Right, there's still some rattles in the door. Not there. Might be the window regulator. Just pop that. I'll pop that on the roof, because otherwise it's going to get stood on. And then I'll be cross. You guys will all laugh because I'll be swearing. Um, I tell you what, the glass is rattling. This could just well be the glass. Um, yes, because I can see the felt, the felt on the frame. It's hanging out the bottom down here. <laughs> For now, <laughs> I might have to see if I can find some more. If I shove that all the way back up to the top again, that stopped it already. Right, let's take the catch off next. 
All the pages are on, wipers are on, it's all going berserk. Off. So taking this catch off is dead easy. Four screws. Should we use a Phillips? Let's use a Phillips. Let's Phillips go. All under the seats. These buns I think have the uh, the window glass support behind them. When you undo this, it's quite common, I guess, with triumphs. I'm not sure. I've not seen, certainly not like this on the Range Rover. All the catch, the whole thing is inside the door. But on the stag, half of it is outside the door, which is this bit I'm taking up right now. And the other half is inside the door. Yeah, let's even got my registration number on there, see? Right. I don't know why that was. Right, so you've got this catch here. Dated 1973, week 35, um, which is interesting because this car was registered in December, but it was an export model. So this car has allegedly been to Hong Kong, which is fun. Um, right, it really needs to go back up now. I don't know why I took the window down. Why did I take the window down? Oh, because I wanted to sort this felt out. Right, okay, so. Let's pull the felt down just a wee bit. I think they might go up a little bit. Now if I push it off and then I overheat the coil, pull that down a little bit. I'm going to put some glue in the channel at the top there and slide it back over the top. And it might just hold the felt in place. I don't want to go berserk with the glue because I'm probably just going to get new felt. Um, you can get it, it just squeezes in. It's the same stuff as I use on the um, on the Range Rover projects. Now, I don't want to go too far up because this lock is all loose in here. I'm going to take the lock out and lube that as well. Um, and obviously, the more things I take out the door, when the rattle goes away, I know that I've got to root cause. Um, right, better glue, and then the window can go back up again. Right, now, let's look next at this door catch. Now, there is a connector that connects it onto the handle. And I'm hoping to work blind here, I'm afraid, folks, because that, that's just fun. I can't remember where it goes in. I think, actually, it just slots in. It does. Is this going to come off in my end? For now. <laughs> it might not slot in. This might be one of those things we've got to take the window frame out to get to it. Oh no, I can feel it. Right, here we go. You're going to get a bit of my head now. There it is. Yes, it slots on up there. I can see the rod now. It's going to need a little screwdriver in there. Little one. That one will do. It's exactly the same style of connector as the um, the lock, uh, as, the, as the lock rods that we took off. And I take the pole out of it. Right, here we go, lock. Um, so the two screws, there's actually four screws on this thing in total, but that's the outside bit of the lock. Okay, it's in a locked position at the moment. That lever there, that one there, pushing up, is what unlocks it. Un, un, sorry, unopens the door. So when you close the door, the catch engages, pushing that up, opens the catch, so the door opens. There's nothing to do with the actual locking mechanism on this part on the outside. The locking mechanism is on the inside part here. So this is the inside, and you can see it's all covered in fucking paint and shit, which is not helpful. I'll give it a quick going over the wire brush in a minute and lube it up. Now, two parts we've got on here. So if I now, I'll, I'll put this back on here again now so we can actually see how it interfaces and how it, it connects together. So let me just put two screws diagonally opposite each other on here. And this might help you if you've got a problem with your stag door locks by seeing one that's been taken apart by me. And if it does help you when you fancy buying me a pint, buy me a pint. If you don't fancy buying me a pint, there's no issue with that at all. Right, okay, so when you open the door from the inside, it pulls on this lever, sorry, on the outside, it pulls on this lever here, okay? And you can see that piece there 
pushes against the post there and that's what opens it so if i engage the catch i've just slammed the door Kadunk. now i'm going to open the handle from the outside you can see it's already pushing on that that rod there and we can hear opened okay when you're working from inside the car more or less exactly the same it pulls on this rod so when you pull the handle on the inside of the car it pulls on this rod and you can see it's operating exactly the same piece of pivot opens the door so how does the lock work how on earth does the lock work right the lock is this lever here for the outside so when you're working on the outside of the car this what happens is you turn the key in in the lock on the handle and it pushes this up and down and you can see that's got a nice spring action to it where it goes up and down all it's really doing is moving this bar to open and close the door out of the way so by locking the car now when i try and pull this lever or this one because it's easier when i try and pull this you see it doesn't open the door because it's bypassing the pin with me unlock the door and you see that the, the platform has moved underneath the pin again does that make sense so locked the platform is moved out of the way unlocked the platform is back in there and when you try and open the door it pushes the pin up and opens the door now if you try and lock the door while the uh try and lock the door while it's open it won't lock because this piece here is in the way this piece of metal here is in the way and, it, and the pin is in the way so it won't allow you to do that for some reason i don't know why maybe it means it stops you prevents you from locking the door while it's open so if I lock the door now, and again, this pin will do exactly the same thing, all it's doing here is moving that lever up and down. So all of this seems to be operating quite nicely. There's no real issue with any of this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back now to look at the door to the handle and see if I can work out what is going on with the lock mechanism on the handle itself. Now, 15 sixteenths, um, uh, bolts that go into the handle and then the handle lifts out of the door so let me do that actually because while we're this far i might as well take the bloody thing out i can fix that gasket at the same time then can't i what do you reckon yes richard of course you can please richard take the handle out of the door now um little quarter inch socket set here will do the job because i guess if you're buying uh, new door handles, and again, Stag Owners Club Touring Fund Limited, no commercial connection. They've reproduced these, but they've made them out of a plastic material, which is just as tough as the Mazak that was original. Um, but they won't corrode, they won't pit. Right. Um, I can't remember if I had to take the window frame out to get the handle out before but we're going to find out this is a good educational video for you guys as to how to get the handle out of the door it's a lot easier getting these out than getting that rainbow ones out i tell you torch no that's not a torch there's just a torch this one here is a faff i'll be honest i've got a feeling oh look the lock's actually a part in here ha! that is not going to help it that is not going to help. Right, so basically what I'm looking at here, the other bolt is behind the, um, the catch for the door itself. So what I'm gonna to need to do, I think, is hold the door catch open. Yeah, I can just, about, can I see it? You see what I mean about these things being a fucking balls ache. Someone in the factory saw this as an opportunity to charge like two hours labour to get this bolt out. I'm sitting on the floor now as you can see. Right, we'll take this one out. I haven't got another gasket for... Hey, Mr. Gravity. Right, that was the cup washer that went flying down inside the door. There it is. There he is. He rolled quite a long way. Right, that comes out. And then we can get up there. It's a bloody long way up, I tell you. Six foot three, 50, bloody, nearly 53 years old. 
Right, so then when we come to take the door handle out, lift him up slightly. Can you see that? So I'm lifting from the bottom edge and then sliding down and carefully manoeuvring out this is all of the mechanisms for the catch and everything. Right, door handle's out. Let's have a closer look at the door handle. Right, the gasket on the back is one of the rubber gaskets. So just, I'm just going to trim it, to be honest. Because these, um, I must have put these on when I did the restoration. It'll do. It'll do for now. One gasket just stops the water getting into the door, which, as you've seen, hasn't been very successful in this car. Now, what we've got, this is the rod um, that, when you open the door, it pulls this rod up and down. So that's the rod for opening the door. This is the pivot that works in that catch. And what I found was, when I was in there, was this split pin, not split pin, seat washer, whatever you want to call it, was hanging right up like that. So I don't think that this was really engaged properly. The spring washer behind it's a bit tired. I have got a ton of stuff to fix this handle. So let's go and see if we could tidy this thing up. The handle itself not too bad. This is where they, they always pit inside here. A bit of peanut butter will get that cleaned up and black again, but I'm really not bothered about that. It's, it's the pitting in here. This one's nowhere near bad enough yet. I think these were probably new when I first got the car. So these are... I'm fairly sure I put new, new handles on them when I first bought this car. I'll go back through my history file and comment below. I will comment on this video right here how old these handles are. Because I've got a feeling they're about 26 years old. And again, they've not done bad, have they? And they were new at that point. It's a little bit of play there, but that's all to do with the door opening mechanism and it works. But it is rattling. So perhaps we'll have a look at that and see if we can stop that rattling. Because that's not great, is it? That's not going to help the door opening, closing, rattling. So if I go back to the car, let me just swivel you around a second. Back to the car now. Um, and let's... Bit of echo in there. And I think a little bit of the uh, uh, sound deadening material on the inside of the door skin is going to stop that drumming. But this here... It's not good, is it? So how are we going to take this thing apart? Now, there's a little C-clip on here, if I remember rightly. Yes, there is. Let me get my little screw button. <coughs> um, little C-clip, because I could end up just drilling this out and putting a larger nut and bolt through there, you see if it's got play in the shaft. Because, right, there's the C-clip. Now I should be able to pull this pin out, and I can. There's a spring washer underneath it. Aha! There's a C-clip, spring washer, and pin. There's quite a few holes drilled on this thing. Why is there extra holes? Hmm. It's not great, this. It's not a snug fit, that. I'll wrap some tape around it, perhaps. Right, let's have a look at the lock next. So... To get the lock out, it's the same as the, the ones I've done on the Range Rover, but you literally just pull this tab off. It'll come off in your hand. If you're not used to my videos, I'm sorry. For now. <laughs> oh, no. Right. Let me just give him a yank. Come on, you bastard. I don't know why he's not coming off in my end. It's caught down here, that's why. And there's a spring washer underneath here as well. So there's the thing. Like I always do with these bits. When you're taking it off, take it off and lay it out in the order it comes off in. Yeah? And then you know that it goes back in that order. Now, the key barrel should now pop out. What I'm going to do though is put the keys in it. To save it all springing out. All the levers springing out all over the bloody place because that would not be good right barrel now comes out there we are 
there's the barrel okay with the key in it that's okay the rest of this seems to be okay so that part there is all right so i think the key area i'm looking to fix is this bit here because that is hole there is elongated i can see it now here's a possible solution so i was looking at bolts and things like that and they all involve drilling this piece out which i think is uh, not included with the with the original door handles and by drilling this out then of course i'm going to render myself kind of having to find another one of these at some point so here's the original pin the pin hasn't worn it's got its original kind of odds and sods on it but this old ear is too big so then i thought well i go about a second why don't i put a shaft in there for now and rather than using a circlip i could use nuts and lock it tight couldn't i so I've got this shaft here, which is uh, quite a small diameter. I've got this for um, carburetor um, push rods. And uh, not push rods. What are you talking about, Richard? You talk some bollocks sometimes. You really do. Um, carburetor. Um, uh, I guess throttle rods. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. So we could potentially, I think it'll work, because by locking the shaft, we can allow this to pivot off the shaft. So why don't we try that? I think that might work. And there's nowhere near as much play on that. I think this might work. What might not work about it is there might not be there could be enough room. There could be enough room to put the nut on the inside of that. Let's see what fits there. There's me threading the rod. Put Mr. Threaded Rod onto a nut. Mr. Threaded Rod can go into the housing. I've got a lot more room on the other side of this thing. I think barely, I mean, it's almost like I straightened it out to be honest. So it could well be that it was too compact in the first place. I don't know. Boom, 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 boom. It's fun though, isn't it? I mean, who else would do your R&D like this? Yeah, that's worked, I think. That's worked. And that can go through there. Now that's gone through. Oh, do you know, this might fucking work. I'm astonished to say... All I'm doing now is just tightening up the rod. Doesn't want to spring down quite so easily. Is that because it does spring down? It's taken all the rattle away. Let's loosen the nut. Move it up to the top of the hole. Because the hole's so fucking massive, you see, I've got to find the happy point whereby this thing is able to. Right, that's a fix. That is a fix. So all I really did there was a um, nice piece of threaded rod. I'm going to cut it off here. I'm not going to leave all this crap on it. I'm going to cut it off here. A couple of nuts, um, and that then works famously, and it's lost all of that wiggle around. Me. Fixed. A little bit of lube. This shite. It's nice. Makes your windows work faster as well. What oh, do we? the lock back in now again what I do with the lock I don't want to go berserk with it but I do want it to operate quite freely and the silicon stuff quite good because it's, well, I suppose the danger is it's just going to attract a load of dirt and shit right that's gone in there then we have this washer that goes out of the way don't worry about that so that washer's on um, a little bit of Vaseline, it's quite good on these mechanisms. 
Oh my goodness. Take it, you have these. Just put it on the washers. And the idea is that it's just going to stop it from all seizing up again. Yes, my keys are underneath there as well. Yes. And then that fella. And again, I'll put a little bit of uh, lube on there. It's actually quite clean in here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the wire brush on the... Um... So that's good. And then this one goes in there. And then lastly, but by no means least, Lee, we have this one goes back on here. Okay, that now. Um, so that's done there. Let's push that washer, push that C clip. It's actually a U clip, I suppose, but that's the same effect as a C clip. Right, now, the idea behind this thing is when you turn the ignition, sorry, turn the lock, you can see that thing's moving quite a long way. It's actually moving nicer than it has done for years. So that's good. This thing is designed to move that way. It needs a bit of free play on it. it needs that. So don't get all upset if that's not there. Right, let's um, attempt to put this lock back on the car again now. You need to get all of this catch mechanism into the door and it needs to go in like that and then there's a lip along the top edge of the door catch just put that piece on there and you need that to engage onto the door skin like that push him up it should go up and then one way or the other it will eventually mate up and align with the door like that that gasket really is shit, isn't it? Never mind, I could change that at another point. Um, I'm not going to silicon it, because I just... Ah, silicon, don't mention it. Um, right, now we've got the two fixings that we had originally. These are cup washer things. So we'll put the one in on this side first, because that's the easiest. I'm not going to tighten it up yet. Right, now comes... The pain in the arse bit because the socket's too deep so i'm going to have to find something to put in the bottom of the socket probably a piece of paper or something put a piece of paper into the socket so that when i put the bolt in it doesn't drop right down into the into the socket so to speak so we go and find something little bit of uh, masking tape wedged into the socket um, and then some grease on the back of the cup Let's see if this works. Oh, that needs to go. Up there. That's roughly in place. Well, at least it's not dropping into the door now. I'm going to have to get up. Can I see it through there? What's the top of my head looking like? I don't know if that went on or not. I think it has actually gone in. It has. That did it. I think that was more fluke than judgment, though. 
but uh, I think getting it so that the washer didn't drop into the door, um, succumb to gravity, helped. Right, so you can put these things in one-handed, two-handed, sorry. They're not the easiest, not the friendliest. Easier things have been known. I'm just putting the other side in. That's done that. Okay, so that's those two in. Now handle. Is good. Right, so we need the lock next. Interesting bit of archaeology here. On the inside of the thing, I've cleaned the worst of the paint. That blue colour, that was the colour it was before um, the guy I bought it off. That's the colour it was. It was just not an original Triumph blue, but someone had painted it that kind of very, very bright. Um, it's even brighter than a Union flag blue. It's, um, yeah, it's very, very bright, loud. Uh, it was originally Triumph 19. Then at some point, someone painted it this blue colour. Um, and then... It subsequently became Triumph 19 again. No, actually it went paper white and then Triumph 19. I was responsible for the Triumph 19 game back on it. It was paper white prior to that. Um, but I've got it, so I've moved all the pivot points up and it's actually operating a bit more clicky now. Satisfying clonk. Everything's sort of working. Lots of silicon lube on it. Okie dokie, right now. That wants to be down, so I want the lock on there to be down to I'm just uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just looking at the way that the thing is aligned I'm sensible if I put the door pull onto the lock sorry guys you can't see this because the access is so bad I can only just bloody see it so I've attached the rod to the um, the door catch first of all now I'm going to position it upwards uh, and make sure that rod is sitting in between the two forks of the actual key lock, which is good. It's done that. Now, balance up there. There we go. Right, so that's there. Now, this fella, just need to position this roughly in the right sort of place. Get the pin in there. Let's put one of the top screws in first of all. So let's find that it needs to go into there. It's actually fairly easy attaching these catches on. Um, you can't see any of that, but all I'm really doing is just holding the inner part in roughly the right sort of place. I can see where the screw holes need to go in through. So it's ever so easy to put this outer piece on. Right, and then we're gonna to need to find out if the outer handle now works. We'll try locking the door, sorry, closing the door. Check it opens. It does. Nothing wrong there. Um, the key next. So we're going to close it. And it opens. And then... Well, that strikes me as being a bit of a, a result of that. I can now lock the key, the card with the key. Right, okay. And still sounds a bit tilly, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. I still think that there's some drumming going on on the inside of the door. So let's go through that next, and then I'm going to sort this lot out, because this, I'm sure, is going to need some adjustment. This is the stuff I was talking about, Dynamo. So all I'm going to really do is, is I'm just going to put a sheet of this on the middle of the door panel in here and stick it flat. And I'm rather hoping it's going to cut some of the drumming of the door skin. If you look at any kind of car when it was first made, they'll, they'll all have this stuff fitted. I guess it's, it's because some skins 
are going to sit a lot happier. That's not behaving itself. That's sticks like shit to a blanket this stuff as well right and it can be molded into corners so i've used it on floor pans in range rovers traditionally it does a very very good job indeed of keeping noise and heat and stuff down on those early a size cars that always seem to be a little bit on the noisy side inside I'm actually inclined to put some of that on this cross piece here. This cross piece here is literally just to support the, the window bracket. Now, before I do that, I will just double check these are all tight. Because it's possible that one of these window supports is not tight. 716s! rattling down here. Glass is rattling. I know the glass is rattling. I need new felt for it. But I'm hearing the rattle down in this area down here. Put some of that stuff on here as well. Um, let's put a piece here. And before I go, I know there's no plastic on the inside of this door as well, but let's get uh, the, 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 the main problem sorted out before we go for Zircon, getting a sheet of plastic on there to protect the back of the door card. The door card is tired. Again, it's probably original to the car. So I'm not actually that bothered about the door card itself. Right, let's have a quick listen. Let's get back inside there. It's a lot better. This frame here is wobbling. I can see the frame's wobbling as it goes in. So I'm wondering perhaps if the frame needs to come out a little bit on this fixing down here. It's going to get sucked flat. Now, in order to get to this bit down here, is that nut? No, it's not welded. Dynamite just flew off the roof. Um, I think that there is a fixing up here as well. Take this bung out carefully. It's faint of heart, do not watch. There we are, he's out. Uh, don't need to take that one out because I've got the nut on the inside there. So let's back him off. See, you've got the, the, by undoing that bolt down there and the nut down here, I can now move the frame around a little bit. So I'm going to move the frame out a tiny bit and then nip him back up again. And then take this nut up down here. the other way now I think. I think I need to no I don't think it has actually right I've taken the plastic off it so let's see if we can get this rod back into this hole up here and when you're putting these clips back together again the one that you just see me taking apart actually fairly straightforward you push the rod into the into the hole you can see 
you can't see. There's a hole there. And then you push the, uh, the tab down onto it and it locks the rod in place. And there he is. That's all you have to do with that. Now, if I was to close the door and open the door, that works. Doors closed, doors open. Nicely done. Right, now, uh, let's get the other rod in. What we need to do, I think, first of all, is take this piece of plastic off. Um, similar sort of clip on here, but it's shredded. the window regulator slightly. Just slap off the bolts here. Shift it up. Just very, 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 very slightly. Because it looks like the spring is just touching the metal down there. Of course the glass is right up at the top so I can't move it. So let me I'm just going to Tighten that one up as well before I forget. I did tighten this one up, didn't I? I did. I don't know about the bunk and go back in there. Probably be easier if I had a bit of bloody silicon on it. But that means getting up. But I'd have to get up anyway. There it's in. So that's got blue paint around the edge of it as well. Yes. Nicely done. Right, okay. I'll just go and get this sorted out. Get that thread slackened off. Um, get the keys to wind the window regulator down slightly so I can get the window regulator spring, which is here. It's just touching the metal. I can see it. Can't get my fingernail in there. So by adjusting the regulator up slightly, it's going to move the spring away from the door. Because there's a rattle there, you hear it? It's quieter when you get up to this end. It's noisy. It goes away. It's that bit there. Right. Naturally, that was a fuck up. So this little pin that I was trying to get loose on that thread was so seized on, and that's where it was. I just ended up snapping it. Bollocks. Um, right, I'll find a different way. I've, I've got, I'm pretty sure I've got about 15 sets of these bloody door rods, but they're all at home. Um, so, yeah, bollocks. It does mean I can't lock the door from the inside, which is hardly a problem. Now I can lock it from the outside. So I think all I'm going to do now is fiddle around with that window regulator, which I need the keys for, which are in my pocket. Excellent. No, it's got the keys. Ah, oh, the keys are on the roof. Right, so all we need to do is just wind the window down a smeg, and then I should be able to adjust the regulator. Uh, window uh, switch needs uh, fixing as well. <laughs> there we are. So let's just adjust that. Put a screwdriver between there and there, and then nip these up again. There's still a rattle around here somewhere, but I suspect it's because of the. Um, um, Glass is what I'm trying to say. You just see these felts are fucked. Absolutely nothing fucked. I mean, the glass should not be moving that much. So it's going to be a new felt job here. So I can get those ordered. Right, windows up. And windows down. So that's working. Okie doke. Right, what I wanted to do was look at the screw hole for the door handle. So there's no point in putting these on yet before you start shouting at me, you forgot to put the door interior door handle on. I don't want it on yet. 
Let's hang that roughly in place. Catches are all roughly in place. So what I'm looking to do here now is think it's probably just drill a hole through there because I know that's roughly where it needs to be. Ah, Mr. Gravity, it has been a while. We just need to bang it down onto those top clips. the clip now that lines up that lines up that lines up right just gonna get a little drill drill a hole right so that all lines up and then I want to be going into there I don't know why there wasn't a hole already in all honesty, Let's double check that is in the right place, and it would appear to be. Let's have this off again. There is the hole, that's good. I don't know why there wasn't a hole. Is this door original to this car? Maybe this door's no, 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 this door's not original to this car because. The door I had on there originally had a new bottom put off, welded onto it really badly. Um, and while the skin was all right on it, it was just shocking. So I think this is a uh, used old stock door that I acquired, but needed a skin. That's pretty much it. <laughs> to me that um, this panel's going to be a lot stiffer when it's braced against the door trim. So I'm wondering if that's the reason why um, it rattles. Now that's it. Done. Slack them off. Oh. Now I'm slacking them off, you see. Because the wedges won't come apart, properly, you need to use an Allen key on here. Just to get the device loose from, and then this winds off. One. Rib not. Get this catch on here now, without its lock, which is a pain. I'm most disappointed. I'll just take it out of this cage here. I'll set them up there. Just clipped it. He's out. So now I can see the end. The end is nigh. Drop the square edge into that piece there. That's all I'm really looking to do here. So I'll push. Of course, be one of those things that should have gone on first, isn't it? I don't make my life so much. So when you're doing this, folks, uh, if you attach this end first <laughs> and slide it into the bloody door, I can do it. I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. There's no way it's this rocket off of it. Right, that's done that. Now, where's the clip? It's there. So in, and now I'm just going to flip the clip on. It's on. So I told you I'd do it. Right, now what we need to do is put the three bolts back in. Right, we'll just put that in the middle of where it needs to go to. Let's pull in the catch. Let's just check that it unlocks the door. Because otherwise, that won't go in there. The screwdriver. Right, door's locked. Door's unlocked. Where was it on the... What we can do with moving that back a little bit. The only reason being is you don't want it to kind of unlock the door because the 
you go over a blooming great pothole in the road. So I'm just going to add some... Put that back in its clip. That's better. Bom, bom, bom. Again, my door catch, that's better. So it's about halfway on the, halfway between not touching it and fully open. I'm happy enough with that, that'll do. And the lock doesn't do nothing, so that's just going to rack it down. This is a pain in the ass, isn't it? But never mind. Fix three rattles, introduce one. See why people don't bother putting this back into the room, do they? Well, it seems to be wind up. Fine work. Water's coming in here, son, I tell you. It's going through. I'll fill the back of it. through here. It's hot. That's nice, isn't it? We might have to move the camera in a minute. Mind you, it's a uh, waterproof one, which is nice. I can put that up here. That into there, put that in. There's a screw in the bottom corner, and then we've got one clip. <laughs> right, so we've got trims back on again, handles secured, and fix the bolt in there. Um, screws holding the trim I know but it's warped and I don't know about you lot I'd say that sounds about a million times better than it did where it was ratchety, clanky, bangy, blobby and it locks and I got around the bodge on the inside I'll just put a bit of tape over it to hold the handle still, otherwise it's still going to rattle. But that's done that. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you got this far in the video, that is, <laughs> listening to me, fixing a door. Um, obviously, seeing the internals of the door lock mechanism and how it all bolts together is going to help you guys with your stags, I guess sort your rattly doors out and get your locks working from the inside and the out. So unfortunately I managed to break the catch because the rod is just not long enough with the broken off thread on it to be able to cope with it. So I'm going to have to um, get another rod. I've got loads of these at home. Um, it's just... Oh, disappointed I broke it. But never mind, this shit happens. I love this in the boot. I've just got the fixing on the end of it still so I don't lose that. And I know what it's for, and then I can fix that at a later date. It's probably when I put new door cards on in 2029. 20, now I'm going to look at this car. I'm using this car a lot more often. I'm going to, going to do some nice things with this car. But that door, though, yeah, I'm pleased with it. I didn't end up adjusting the hinges on it. It just it closes. I'm happy with that. Thanks for watching. You know what's going to happen next, don't you? Boris is going to unlock us so we could all go on our staycations. And look at the fucking weather. <laughs> oh my god. This is the quiet bit. This is the quiet bit. This is the bit which. Uh, oh, it's going to get loud again. Exmoor's disappeared. It's over there somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, it's my fault. I bought a convertible down to Devon. My bloody fault. <laughs>